I the a-hole for making my stepsister and stepmom look for my lost necklace? I 17 female have a necklace that was made for me by a friend who does wire wrapping. It's the prettiest thing I own. And my friend moved last year, so is my memory of her. My dad married his girlfriend last year, and her daughter of 15 female and I don't get along. She's annoying and whines about everything. She always wants to borrow my stuff and then loses or breaks it or something. My stepmom just enables that and gives her whatever she wants to shut her up. It's dumb. Anyway, she really likes my necklace, but I won't let her touch it because I know how she is. She wanted to wear it with an outfit for a birthday party at her dad's a week ago, and I said no. So she went to her mom who told me to let her wear it to keep the peace. I told my dad, and he said I didn't have to let her wear it. So I didn't. On the day of the party though, I notice it's gone from my jewelry box, and stepmom admits she took it and let my stepsister wear it since it was so important to her. I was so mad. I was going to just tell my dad, but he was away for work for a couple of days and I decided to wait till he got back. Stepsister said she would give it back the next day, but I saw it at the floor of the bathroom that night and took it back before it could get broken. I decided to teach her a lesson, so I hid it and then asked for it back the next day. She couldn't find it, so her mom and her went through her room from top to bottom trying to find it, and when they couldn't, stepmom said she would buy me a nicer one to replace it. But I just told her she can't replace something my friend made, and she stole something my dad already said I didn't have to share, and this is why I don't like either of them. My dad came home and found out what happened. It had a big fight with stepmom about it, that now they're sleeping in separate rooms. Stepsister is grounded. I'm planning on finding the necklace, because the point is made. Most of my friends think it's deserved, but a couple think I should have just told my dad and not made them look for a necklace I already had back. Now for the top comments. Not day home. Your stepmom is an a-hole for allowing her daughter to steal your items. That was a handmade gift from a friend. Your father definitely needs to know how horrible his wife treats you, and how she lets her daughter mistreat you as well. If her daughter wanted a necklace so badly, her mom should have gone out and bought her one herself if it was so important that she had to wear it. Is this petty? Yes. Yes, it is. But in my opinion, you are justified a-hole in this case, since not only did they steal from you, then your stepsister was so irresponsible with your necklace. Edit to add. Opie, is there any way you can sneak the necklace out of your house and have the friend who made it, or someone else you really trust not to say anything? Keep it at their house, so your steps don't snoop in your room to find a hiding place for it? Gloriously petty. I like it, Opie. Not stay home. Not stay home. This was necessary in this situation and it got your point through. They should have listened to you in the first place, but make sure you know where you found it so they can't get annoyed. I hope they learn to leave your things alone in the future. Just a bit of advice for the future? Most of my friends think it's deserved. When you do stuff like this, don't tell anyone. Your friends could tell someone who then tells your family. Then the crap will hit the fan and you will get in trouble. Learn how to keep a secret. Two people can keep a secret when one of them is dead. Not stay home. It was taken without your permission and against the wishes of your dad, then was just dumped on a bathroom floor. I'd be inclined to say it maybe went a little too far, but actually if it could mean the stepmom won't enable her daughter so much in the future, it might work out okay in the long run. Next story. Am I the a-hole for taking back my gift and refusing to return it? This happened over Christmas and I'm still getting heat over it. I love knitting and crochet. It's my thing. This year, with COVID at all, money's been tight. So I decided to knit a Christmas gift for everyone using yarn I already had. Everyone already agreed to only do kid gifts, so I made small stuffed animals, unicorns and dragons in different colors. It was my first time doing this and all the best patterns are crochet, which I'm not as comfortable with, so it took months to make them all. I didn't mind though. It was fun to learn something new, but a good way to use up some of my enormous stash. All my side were happy, or polite enough to act happy, with the gifts. The problem was with my husband's families. His sisters immediately started making snippy, sarcastic, but kind of indirect comments about me being cheap slash lazy. Niece didn't seem to like it either, and said some things that, yes, I get that she's a kid, but my feelings were still pretty hurt. 
There's a history of this sort of thing, so maybe I'm too sensitized to this. But I angrily took the gift back and handed her some cash, which made things really awkward, and we left shortly after. The big problem happened when Nias realized that all her cousins got matching stuffies, and so she wanted hers back. I already gave hers away, and I refused to make another one. Apparently, she is crying that I broke her heart. But I'm finding it hard to care because I'm still hurt by how she and her mother behaved. They have not apologized either yet, but expect me to. My husband thinks I should make her another one and should have overlooked the comments in the first place. I told him that he's in charge of his family's gifts from now on, which is apparently petty. Now everyone, including husband, is mad at me except his stepdad and sister. My family is, obviously, on my side, but that's just making things worse. I get that snatching the gift back and flinging money at my sister-in-law's face. The words, I don't think I did. But I have been overly dramatic and rude. But am I in a hell for it for being pushed too far? Edit. I was told I should mention that Nies is around 11 to 12 years old, and that I didn't literally snatch the toy out of her hands like my sister-in-law claims. Nies had tossed it away, so I picked it up. Not day home. Entitled children grow into entitled adults. Who damn sure don't need any more of those. I tell the sister-in-law that maybe she should have had some respect and taught her child respect, and should have the matching stuffy. As someone who actually does crochet, making that stuff is both time-consuming and still expensive because of the materials going into it, even if it's yarn you already have. Not day haul at all. I'd be happy to get a handmade gift. Not day home. OP, Hubs should handle the gifts for his side of the family and you deal with yours. That is 100% normal and okay. Sounds like Hubs just expects you to do all the labor and have zero responsibility himself. That's BS. Yep, I noticed several issues in this post, and this one is one of them. Yeah, the husband puts in no effort, takes no responsibility, allows his wife to be insulted, blames the wife for his sister-in-law's behavior, demands his wife apologize when she did nothing wrong, then calls his wife petty because after all of this, she says he should take responsibility for gift-giving for his family. He is a super a-hole. Although I get the feeling if hubby was in charge of the gifts for his side, he would blow the entire household budget on his family just to make himself look good and not worry about Opie or her family getting anything. It would make life easier if he would buy their gifts, because they always love whatever he gives them. Sometimes I would buy things and let him say he bought them, and they never complained. But this year we couldn't afford much, and everyone knows he doesn't knit slash crochet, so it was obvious who they were really from. He wants to go back to the old arrangement, but I don't want to anymore. Edit 2. Thanks to everyone who responded. I'm sorry I can't reply to you all. I've tried showing this post to my husband and unfortunately, it went... not well. He's upset over me making our private things public, which I understand, but still his reaction seemed disproportionate. I don't want to bring my family into this because they already don't like him, but I'm staying with my sister for a bit. I don't know what to do. Sorry if I'm not responding much anymore. There's just too much else I need to think about now, I guess. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for deciding to ban my in-laws from their future grandkids? Me 22 female and my husband 27 male are married for three years and we're discussing having children. We have pretty good relationships with my husband, but two years ago he decided to move his parents to our city due to the health reasons. I totally supported him, but said I'll not be comfortable with them living too close from us. He said okay. In three months from this conversation, I found out that he secretly made a deal with our next door neighbor to buy his land for his parents. Money's theirs. I was furious to say the least, but he promised that they'll move to their house right away and won't live with us. He promised it'll be great. I went with it and even supported our family financially while he was building their house instead of working. In three months, it turned out they live with us for one and a half month. It was a hell for me. After two weeks, my mother-in-law, 46 female, started to bully me while my husband was at work. She insulted my career choice. I was at fourth year of my bachelor's degree and had two jobs, one being connected with my degree and my housekeeping skills. Later, she spilled that she blames me for her son leaving his well-paid job with military forces in countries with high risk of war actions. At that time, he helped them to close their credit bills. 
This was getting worse as I noticed their drinking problems. My husband had tried to talk to them, but it didn't work. My husband had noticed them being drunk too, even had problems with them as they insulted him. But on the next day, everything was fine. At that point, I was done with them and went no contact while my husband kept in touch. About three months ago, my husband and I started discussing having children, and I said I'm not comfortable with my in-laws being a part of our children's lives. He disagreed with me and said it should be our decision. I asked him to promise me that he won't take children to the in-laws when I'm against it. He refused. Then I asked him to sign the official contract that he will not organize them meeting our children. He refused. After many conversations, I agreed to talk to them and make things work. But it was horrible. When I asked why she treated me that bad, she said, As a mother-in-law, I have a right to demand children. Where are they? For all my questions about different encounters we've had, she said, It didn't happen, and you are lying. Even when my husband said that these situations had happened, she hasn't acknowledged them and blew up and screamed, I apologize to you. I don't want to have the sin of pride. Then she demanded that I apologize too. I ask for what? And she screamed that I'm a liar and my family are liars. My husband supported me and apologized for his decision to move them into house five meters across from us. So now I have no contact with the in-laws but my husband does. And my decision about them being grandparents is still a big no. My husband chose to be silent about his decision. So am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole, but run. Your husband has lied to you at every turn about his intentions with his parents. He has smiled to your face and done what he wanted all this time. Do not have children with this man. He is allowing his mother to mistreat you and approving it. Once you have children, you will never escape him. Make sure your birth control is never left where he or she can find it. If you can stay on an implant or IUD, something you can't get to, do so. Right? Just red flags all over the place. She will regret having children with this man for the rest of her life. Think about the poor kids in a situation like that. Baby, if you think your husband isn't going to go behind your back again, you're wrong. He lied and went behind your back once to move them in right next door. Now it'll even be easier for him to sneak any children over there. Twice. Wants to move them next door and wants to actually move them in for almost two months. It's like he purposely found out what boundary she had, negotiated it, and purposely went about trying to break it. But then blamed her slash would make excuses for why his behavior was justified. OP, you are getting a glimpse into how your husband will parent any children you have with him. Please follow through with what you say, for him to learn the consequences of breaking your boundaries. Right now, there's hasn't been, since he just keeps moving the goalposts, slowly moving you closer to feeling like nothing makes sense. And once nothing makes sense, you doubt yourself at actions, and then whatever he tells you, you have to believe, because you will feel like you can't trust your own actions. And now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for saying I don't remember how long I've been married? My husband, 42 male, and I, 40 female, have a very good and loving relationship. For the most part, he is a very helpful and engaged spouse and father. He cannot slash will not remember the dates of important milestones. I plan and organize the kid's birthday months in advance, and he participates. I spent the first few years of our marriage sulking about him forgetting my birthday, and since then I planned it out myself and let him know what I want as a gift. I remember my in-laws said close friends' birthdays and greet them on my behalf, leaving him to manage his relationships with them on his own. And I do love him a lot, so I plan to celebrate his birthday. I know he'd forget it if I didn't do so. I gave up caring about Valentine's Day as long ago. But to his credit, he is good about remembering and celebrating Mother's Day for me. He always forgets our wedding anniversary, and after eight years of planning and having him simply participate, I left it on him to do something on this one event. He forgot it every year since then. We've been married for 13 years now, and we haven't celebrated our anniversary for the past five years. I've made my peace with that. We had a family gathering this weekend, and in a group conversation, someone asked my husband how long we've been married. He did this, oh, I don't know, wife keeps tracks of these things. And he and his siblings are all like, haha, typical husband. They ask me how long we've been married. And I did the same tone of, oh, I don't know, who can remember, haha. Everybody became a bit awkward and husband looked upset at me. 
Later, he asked me why I'd say that, and I said that we don't celebrate our anniversary, so it's not at the forefront of my mind. The realization that we haven't celebrated our anniversary in years came as a surprise to him. He pointed out that I remember how old our house is, how old our cars are, even how long he's had his laptop. He doesn't remember those things. So for me to not remember how long we've been married is showing everyone that my marriage is of much lower value to me. I said that instead of making his forgetfulness a point of contention, I chose to be like him and not track the age of our relationship, and he should be accepting of that. It may be the a-hole since I do remember how long we've been married, but I'm pretending not to because if he can't bother to remember and celebrate, then I shouldn't be expected to either. Not stay home. This man may not remember much, but he does have the ability to buy himself a calendar and use it. It's not your job to care for the both of you. Or a smartphone. They remember anniversaries for you these days. Yep, I have all important dates in my phone's calendar. Even birthdays and anniversaries, even if I know when it is. It's just a reminder for the day of it as I can get days mixed up sometimes. I bet he remembers his favorite sport team and a lot of numbers around that. He just doesn't care about the marriage and wife in the same way as something important. Not day home. It's so incredibly tiresome. The expectation of being responsible for managing the household. Well, they have a free pass at not even recalling things as simple as a wedding anniversary. Being forgetful is one thing. Being uninvested is something else entirely. I think this is why the husband is upset. He just got hit with the reality that she could be as uninvested as he is. That's not something he was prepared for, though she's been dealing with it for years. It's not even that she is uninvested, it's just a potential, his new perception that she could be. Somehow it was fine for him in his mind, but a shaky reality if she's as bad as he is. He is not a kid in school. There are no participation trophies he'd want to put some effort in. He realizes they didn't celebrate for five years, but only after it becomes a matter of public opinion. He was embarrassed she didn't play the part he expected in front of people. To remember and design that value while he got to play down his part in things. It came as a surprise to him. Five years? Really? There is forgetful and there is willful ignorance. Everyone celebrates their relationship differently, but if they weren't married, sleeping in the same bed like sleeping in separate rooms, would they be considered just people sharing a house? 